Hi there, my name is Ellis Palmer and welcome to my new vlog on Spanish politics for the land and economic. Today's vlog will be about the political situation in Catalonia and the vote that was held last week on the political future of Catalonia. It was held last Sunday, the 9th of November. Today's vlog will be entitled The Week Long Hangover. But first off, let me introduce myself to you guys. My name is Ellis Palmer. As I've already said, I am a political science, Spanish and Catalan student at the University of Birmingham and I'm currently studying politics, not political science, at the University of Barcelona on my year abroad. My political interests include far left parties, nationalist politics and also centrist parties as well. So, on to the bloody bit. You can't get to grips with the Catalan situation without knowing the historical context surrounding it. So on the 6th of October 1934, under the Second Republic and under the protection that he felt that the Spanish Second Republic gave him, Luis Campanz, but then President of the General Etat, proclaimed an independent Catalan Republic. Now that Republic lasted around, unfortunately, 11 hours. Um, the civil military uh, relations took hold that existed in Madrid and Campanz was arrested and um, was executed in 1940 by the Franco regime. He's the only um, democratically elected leader to have been executed while still in his position. Um, so, what you got during this period after the Civil War is under Francoism you have a suppression of Catalan language and culture. So anybody you found speaking Catalan in the street, for example, by a policeman could be um, fined. Um, um, that's part of the um, inherently authoritarian and conservative nature of Franco's regime. Furthermore, um, that regime, for example, um, imprisoned Jordi Puyol who later became the president of the Catalan government in 1960 for seven years um, for singing the Catalan hymn in a concert that was being held to um, commemorate the life of the guy who actually wrote that hymn. And Jordi Puyol came out of prison and then became the father of Catalan nationalism in the 1980s. So what you've got is up until 1977, up until the fall of the Franco regime, you have this inequality, this inherent discrimination towards Catalonia by Madrid, by the Franco's government. I and mean, in 1977, a guy called Josep Terradegas, who um, was the leader of the Catalan Republican left in exile, um, came back to Catalonia with the famous declaration, Ciutadans de Catalonia, Ya sok aquí. Citizens of Catalonia are now here. And this guy, relatively largely symbolic, was able to force through um, the devolution um, settlement, which means that um, Catalonia was able to gain a degree of autonomy um, from the Spanish state from 1978 onwards. Now, that amount of um, devolution has obviously since changed since 1978 because of subsequent developments. Um, and obviously whilst it's only four regions of Spain, the historical nations, if you like, of Spain that originally got devolution, there's now, I think, 17 um, autonomous regions in Spain, obviously with different levels of autonomy, but still. Um, so this brings us on to the um, Catalan referendum really and I think the historical context, particularly the legal side but also the historical context is very very important for actually understanding what happened last Sunday. So um, first phase of, um, obviously a lot of this um, Catalan nationalism you know is, is kind of nascent, it's kind of, it's not exactly recent in society but the independentist strand of it is still fairly new for it to be in the mainstream. I mean, you know, Catalonia, yes, a lot of people wanted a significant degree of autonomy for Catalonia, but an actual independent Catalan state 
was actually not a very realistic prospect until fairly recently, until the rejection of the fiscal pact actually by the Spanish government in, I think it was 2011 or 2012, when Artur Mas went to Madrid, and Mariana Hoy rejected that fiscal pact. So what you've got is you had in 2012 with the Diada, with the last year with the um, human chain uh, for Catalonia, and this year as well on the Diada, you have this kind of um, this willingness, if you like, to um, demonstrate a difference with Spain, to demonstrate the fact that the Catalan people want more autonomy, want independence um, from Spain. Um, so with this. Um, it's not a referendum, it's not even a consulta, in the end it's called a participation of the citizens. Participación de la ciudadanía en Catalán, en Catalán, but um, yeah, that doesn't really translate too well into English. So I'll just explain a little bit about what happened, because actually um, it wasn't a referendum, it wasn't legally binding in any way, because they realised actually you know, it's, it's a process, it's going to be a process for us to get to this step and because of the fact that the power to call referendums is determined by the Spanish government in Madrid and the Catalan government knew they weren't going to get um, that agreement from Madrid to hold a referendum. It was decided from, from the while off that, the referen that any such vote on Catalonia's political future was not going to be legally binding. Um, so then they came up with the idea of a consulta, which would be a, a consultation on the future of Catalonia. Um, not a referendum, it wouldn't be legally binding, it would be a consultation asking the Catalan people what they felt uh, was the future of Catalonia. There are two questions, do you want Catalonia to be a, a, a state? And do you want that state to be independent? Um, but that plan, if you like, was rejected by the Constitutional Court in early October, even after the um, January attack, the Catalan government here had started to publicise what was going to be happening. So, October, you've got that whole situation going on. And then two or three days later, after the Constitutional Court decided to uh, strike down the idea of a consulta, and um, possibly really because it sounded too much like a referendum, um, they came up with the idea of holding a participation of citizens, which would essentially be the same as it was previously, but it would it would be more like a the same questions as it was previously, it would just be more like a poll. So what you had last Sunday was that 2.3 um, million people here in Catalonia, that is about 37% of the Catalan population turned out to vote. Um, and of those 2.3 million, 80% voted CC. So it was, there's two questions on the ballot. They voted yes to the first question, which of a new state, and yes to the second question of independence. And then on this, and then there's a second category who voted C, no, so that's yes to a new state, and no to an in that state being independent. 10% or 37% that voted said that they wanted a new, wanted a state, but a new state, but one that wasn't independent, and only 2% actually of who of the thirty seven percent who voted turned out in favour of an independent Catalan state. So actually what you're gonna see what we've seen this week here in Spain is we've seen all the major political parties both here in Catalonia and in wider Spain coming up with their own plans on what they want to do. Mariano Rajoy, the Catalan uh, president of the government, has basically come out and said no I'm not willing to constitute any reform of the con I'm not willing to contemplate any reform of the constitution that threatens the unity of the Spanish state. Pedro Sanchez, the leader of the Socialist Party, could quite possibly be the president of the government in the next 18 months. Um, he came out and said, I'm in favour of um, constitutional reform. We need reform. 
kind of a more a more third way approach between the two, if you know what I mean. And then the Catalan parties have been pressing ahead with um, plans to hold a plebiscitary a pre plebiscitary election, which actually doesn't sound that good in English, but una elección plebiscitaria in Catalan and Spanish, um, which. Um, well, basically, there's a lot of debate going on because one of the main parties wants to have a united list, the other party doesn't want to have a united list. That's Convergencia Unión. They want a united list, and the Esquerra Republicana de the Catalunya, they don't want a united list, but they both want elections. So the framework is that they're going to have those elections, and then depending on who wins those elections, there will be a unilateral declaration of independence. Um, which could actually be quite an interesting prospect, but I don't think that will happen until uh, springtime next year. If the elections are called at all, they'll probably happen around springtime. If it's going to be a declaration of independence, I reckon that will probably be held in around early September next year, maybe to contemplate with the Catalan National Day for the other. Who knows? Um, so that's, that's all for this week's vlog, really, guys. Um, next week, I'm going to be talking about the um, far-left phenomenon, if you like, of Podemos, um, which is a small left-wing party. It was only, well, a relatively small left-wing party. It was only started up in uh, January of this year. It started in the European elections and gained 8% no, gained eight of the vote. Um, for European deputies and at the moment is the party that is doing really well in all the opinion polls over here. So that's all for this week and I'll be back with Podemos and Pablo Iglesias and Pablo Iglesias next week. Speak to you soon.